Hello, everyone. <clears throat> First, I want to thank Professor Crossley and the ANAE faculty for this wonderful honor. And I want to thank the staff for helping us all prepare for this celebration. They've told me that I can have up to five minutes for these remarks. Unfortunately, as a long-standing engineering professor, I've, had, I've been programmed to talk for 50 minutes, but I'll try to keep it short here. I'm truly grateful and humbled to be invited to join such a prestigious group of OAE honorees, both present and past. A group that includes ANAE former faculty colleagues and heads, Elmer Brune, Bruce Reese, and Henry Yang. While an undergraduate at Purdue, I had taken a course in stress analysis from Professor Brune, and we all enjoyed hearing his experiences while working in the aerospace industry. After graduation, I drove across the country to Southern California and took an aerospace engineering position with the Douglas Missiles and Space Corporation, working on the Apollo launch vehicle. Neil Armstrong had not yet landed on the moon. One day while walking through the engineer's offices in the structural analysis division, I noticed that a copy of Professor Brune's book on stress analysis was on every engineer's desk. Years later, while a graduate student back at Purdue, I frequently chatted with a young assistant professor named Henry Yang about such things as Purdue basketball and home mortgages. He was about to buy his first house. I'm sure that today there are copies of Henry's book on finite element analysis on many structural engineers' desks around the country. Then after graduate school and my joining the ANAE faculty, I frequently was invited to play golf with Professor Bruce Reese when he wanted to escape the office. A young assistant professor does not decline such an invitation from the head of ANAE. But I'm pleased to note that this prestigious group of OAE honorees also includes many of my former students, and I always try to keep up with my students. This group of students includes, for example, Dan Raymer, Dave Waggy, Richard Van Allen, Frank Bauer, Charlene Edinburgh, Rakesh Kapanya, and Jeff Schrader. And this year, this group now includes fellow honoree Chris Clark, or C squared, as we called him. All have been very successful aerospace engineers, and their accomplishments enhance Purdue's reputation. Continuing on the subject of students, since I've served on the faculties of several universities, I've had the unique opportunity of teaching and interacting with the engineering students at these various universities. So I'll share this observation. It is clear to me that the engineering students at Purdue, both undergraduate and graduate, are by far the best I've had the pleasure of working with. They are, of course, bright, but more importantly, they are intellectually curious. They respond positively to a challenge and have a great work ethic. In that regard, I'll also share that during the 14 years I was on the Aero Astro faculty, the faculty raised the undergraduate degree requirements a few times, including increasing the credit hours required for graduation. Rather than this negatively impacting student interest in A and AE, our enrollments actually increased with each of these curriculum enhancements. In discussing this later with several ANAE students in these cohorts, they all replied that yes, they were aware that the requirements were increased, but they were proud to pursue the most demanding academic program in the schools of engineering at Purdue. I think this tells us a lot about ANAE students. So in closing, I'd like to applaud all you students. You can be proud to be a part of this legacy and a member of such a wonderful student body. Plus, I want to encourage the faculty to always appreciate having such exceptional students to work with. They are a large part of what makes Purdue great. Thank you for the opportunity to share some thoughts and memories with you. And thanks again to Bill Crosley, Crosley and to all of my a and A E faculty colleagues.